Around the 16th century, the Ottoman state was literally living its golden age. Its borders were from Morocco on the Atlantic coast to around Iran. It stretched from the Hejaz region to the borders of Austria. Galleys and galleons carrying the flag of the empire could be seen in all four corners of the Mediterranean. In these years, the capital city of Istanbul, as well as the great cities of the Ottoman Empire like Aleppo, Cairo, Bursa and Edirne, had become the purse of the Mediterranean world. The tolerance-based governmental system adopted by the state provided the formation of a multinational and multicultural structure in these cities, especially during the period until the Tanzimat Reformation. Daily life in Ottoman cities was like a mosaic that presented colorful images of various cultures and the neighborhoods that formed the city were the basis of this mosaic. Ottoman cities were generally divided into neighborhoods where between 5 and 100 families lived. However, the most common ones were medium-sized neighborhoods with around 30 to 40 families. These neighborhoods were generally shaped around mosques, churches and synagogues. The inhabitants of the neighborhood were people who belonged to the same religion, ethnicity or sect. In this respect, religious centers and places of worship had central importance in the daily life of the Ottoman people. The people who were included in the city life on a neighborhood scale brought an extraordinary richness to the language from their own culture. They would reside in the neighborhood belonging to their culture, but would interact with people of other cultures from other neighbors during their daily lives. Women did not leave the premises of their homes very often, yet the inclusion of women in urban life to a certain extent was supported by the Ottoman state. A bazaar was established in Bursa where women sold their handicrafts, and similar markets were opened in Istanbul. In addition, Ayyub Turkish cream shops, which were the favorite places of the 16th century, were places where women, as well as men, frequently visited and had the opportunity to socialize. However, the main place where women socialized was the baths. It was quite common for the wealthy to build a bath as a separate building in their homes. Despite this, even their wealthy wives made it a habit to go to the public baths at least once a week. In the baths, women came together with peace of mind, chatted, danced, and even arranged their girls for marriages. The life of men, on the other hand, basically had a cycle that went back and forth between three places. These three venues were the mosques where they worshipped, the house where he spent time with his family, and the workplace where he earned his bread. Today, historians think that the coffee houses which would later become a place often preferred by men to spend time, were actually built around the 15th and 16th centuries. According to Osman Nuri Ergin, known for his works on Ottoman urban history, until the first quarter of the 16th century, coffee houses were places where people gathered to read and discuss matters of science and religion. Accordingly, in those years, these places were called kreatane, derived from the Arabic word kraat, meaning to read. However, with the widespread use of coffee, the general appearance of coffee shops began to change. This change was not negative, and a new place was added to the life of the Ottoman citizens that would enable them to socialize. Here, they were meeting with their friends, chatting, discussing, finding solutions to problems and being aware of developments in distant lands. In traditional societies, like the Ottomans, knowledge and culture were produced in chat environments where people came together. In this respect, coffee houses were of great importance in the production of knowledge and culture in the Ottoman Empire. With the widespread use of coffee, coffee houses became an important part of the daily life of the Ottoman people. In addition, the number of taverns in big cities where non-Muslim citizens came together and spent time was quite high. Aside from this, wine and rocky making was very common among non-Muslims. Many of them had their own workshops at work where they could produce them. 
Another place that had an important role in Ottoman daily life was the houses. However, the data we have on Ottoman residences is quite limited. In addition to the frequent fires and earthquakes, natural decay caused the details on the houses to disappear over time. Aside from this, with the renovations, the old textures of the houses were completely changing. For example, even if there was a building dating back to the 18th century, it would be almost impossible to determine its condition when it was first built due to the changes it went through. On the other hand, our knowledge about how Ottoman houses were furnished is much more than what we know about Ottoman houses themselves. During the day, the rooms were made suitable for sitting by laying mattresses and carpets. The flat and large cushions that one sat on and the pillows used for backrest were different, and the richness of a house was usually evident from the pillows. In Bursa, which is famous for silk weaving, Daily used cushions were made of coarse silk fabric that could also be woven at home. Diba and silk velvet cushions used in rich houses were much more ostentatious and comfortable. Carpets were hung on the walls as decorations as well as on the floor. Clothes and sundries were placed in closets or chests. Bed, quilts and pillows were placed in the big compartments at the top and small items such as books, boxes or lamps were placed on the small shelves. It was also the case that small drawers were added to these cabinets to store smaller items. Without a doubt, food was one of the most important parts of the daily life of the Ottoman people. Travelers who visited the Ottoman state in the 15th and 17th centuries stated that the Ottoman society was very self-confident in terms of food culture. They preferred low-cost and quickly prepared meals, and they did not need anything else if they had salt, bread, garlic or onion, and some yogurt with a barrel of rice. They wrote that a few bowls of oil and dried fruit are enough to make up their daily meals. Breakfast in the Ottoman Empire differed according to the economic situation of the households. Those who were well-off had a varied breakfast including honey, cream, jam, cheese, olives and muffins. On the other hand, the breakfast table of poor families whose economic situation was not very good would be much simpler. Often, they had to pass on their first meal of the day with a bowl of soup and a loaf of bread. Especially in winter, the palude dessert, which was sold in cups by peddlers sprinkled with ginger, cinnamon and rose water, was important for both the rich and the poor and was usually consumed for breakfast. Those who could not go to their homes at noon ate their meals at a food place. The whole family came together for dinner. Rice, mutton and vegetables were the most consumed foods. Meals were eaten in tiny bowls and pans placed on a tray and in bowls made of porcelain or terracotta. It was quite common to eat from a single bowl with food laid out. After the meal, the coffee session started. There was at least one cup for each individual in the households. In the 16th century, even after when coffee became widespread, milk and dairy products were enjoyed by the Ottoman people. In particular, yogurt was consumed throughout the day. Istanbul's ape district was famous for its Turkish cream shops along narrow streets. These shops were at the forefront of the places that the shopkeepers in the vicinity frequently visited in order to relieve their tiredness and socialize. During the day, the most preferred drinks by the Ottoman people were water, grape and honey juice. In the cities, workplaces were organized into separate neighborhoods. Since the distance was short, it was usually on foot from the stone paved sidewalks from the houses to the workplaces. The shops were used both as workshops and as sales places. The goods that came with the trade caravans were stored in the big inns and distributed to the tradesmen. The sounds emanating from various shops where goods were produced brought a different color and liveliness to the city. In many Western European countries, it was basically the class principle that determined the flow of daily life. However, the situation in the Ottoman Empire was different. 
The rules that determined the daily life of the Ottoman people were shaped around the multinational structure that made up the cities. People were divided into neighborhoods, not according to their social status, but according to their culture. Even though they lived in neighbors separated by cultural borders, they lived in a relatively peaceful coexistence.